Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, this is actually take two because uh, I was trying to combine two things and I think that video would have been way too long, uh, and the, the meat of it is, we, okay, we got some good news. <laughs> we have the next America Chavez book. We have the next America Chavez by Gabby Rivera. Uh, we have a horribly, but in a fun to roast way. Some of these books are horrible and it just makes you sad or angry. Like this is so bad, it's actually fun to roast it to death. So uh, just to get everyone up to speed on uh, Chelsea Kane, um, is uh, Chelsea Kane is a novelist. From what I heard, an actual novelist and that people have actually heard from her and she actually has sales. A lot of times uh, Marvel specifically will bring in female novelists and YA novelists and they'll, they'll pump them up like they're someone. And then people say, yeah, nobody's heard of this person or this. This person had one self-published book that got some BS award that no one's heard of either. Um, but she actually does have a following. She got into uh, comics uh, on merit. She actually submitted a, a, a manuscript with a male name. It just said Michael Wilson. Oh, no, 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 no. She's friends with Brian Michael Bendis. And she asked, uh, she said, I want to work at Marvel. <laughs> and he and he hooked her up. Uh, there, there was a whole article that talked about that. She then proceeded to uh, get the book she wanted. Uh, her first comic was a number one comic. Hmm, I seem to notice a trend. Uh, comics pulls in uh, women who have never written a comic and give them a brand new, highly touted number one series. Let's see how that one's going to work out for the 12th time. Um, uh, it did terrible. One of the reasons it did terrible is because um, she never bothered to actually learn the character. One of the traits about SJW writing, uh, especially when it comes to female uh, characters, especially when it comes to female SJWs on female characters is they write them all the same. They are supergirl hero person. Uh, they are a snide, sarcastic, uh, uh, eternal teenager, um, even when they're in their 30s and 40s. And we, we're going to see this both for the characters they write and themselves. So um, uh, the book got uh, canceled at issue three, uh, but they let it go to finish a storyline at like issue nine. And then as a middle finger to the entire comic book reading population uh she had the uh the main character uh on a beach with a t-shirt that said ask me about my feminist agenda of course it's just like uh just tweaking the nose and she was very delighted with it, it and comics readers in general were very very bothered because it's like we gave you a chance uh i was just getting back into comics when um when uh mockingbird came out and uh, I liked the character and it had a cool cover, so I bought it. And it was absolute trash. Like, it was awful. It was, it was like really bitter uh, uh, feminist tripe that um, showed that Kane didn't know the Marvel Universe at all. First of all, she had Mockingbird be a kid when the first um, group of Avengers started. Mockingbird was already an adult when the superhero, and then it's like, because there's, I want to be a superhero, because there's no female superheroes, it's like the Wasp, Fantastic Woman, like, there's so Black Widow, it, it, it didn't make any sense. Anyway, it got canceled, and then we just found out that she had been, for two years, in development of a Vision series, which they quit, uh, they canceled, and so, what do SJWs do? They always turned on you. This, this company that gave her a number one with no experience because she knew Brian Michael Bendis that worked with her for two years in kind of an e-viewing situation where they're like, you don't actually know how to write comics. So let's endlessly massage your scripts back and forth for years until you, okay, yeah, we're just going to cancel this. But girl slay, she's about to knock them all on their little patooties because man eaters is it's shit. Yeah, it's shit. <laughs> it's total shit. It is so freaking bad that I have to repeat something that I often say is that, okay, I'm not trying to humble the brag, but yes, uh, my company has earned a lot of money on two projects. And yes, technically, I probably do have a budget to create a fake comic um, and pass it off as something, uh, but I don't have time for that. This is a real comic. When I read the dialogue, it's real. I didn't do any tweaks on the art. This is an actual book that, who images, very proud of him. Girl Slay. Um, Chelsea Kane is amazeballs. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start off here, and and uh, it's got it's called Man Eaters, and it's got cat paws, and it's got a sparkly kind of like a notebook. This is a kind of a thing you would see for a middle school girl that would uh, you know on first day of school she would have a notebook that would look something uh, like this. So uh, then we get this thing uh, by order of the Ministry of Trouble. 
public notice. Please be advised there has been a cat attacking area. So, oh god, I'm just gonna get. We're just gonna get right into. Can I close this thing? It's always got this thing open. I don't, oh yeah, that thing. So, uh, oh boy, this is this is the this is the first page. It's a uh, comic within a comic of a uh, superhero called Tampon Woman. In the near future, a hero will rise. She will set her people free, and the world will know her name, Tampon Woman. Mwahaha! My castle of patriarchy is complete. No one can stop the systemic domination of women now. And then Tampon Woman says, Not so fast, Mr. Misogyny. Ready, aim, fire. And then the Tampon Woman says, The personal is political. And then we find one of the main characters is this uh, girl who is um, playing with tampons. I'm going to throw out an age and say she is 12. Okay, so I could almost do an entire video on uh, this uh, right, her, right here. Uh, for those who don't know about American politics, in uh, 2016, uh, Hitler came back to life and he took over, like, America? Um, uh, Donald Trump won the election against uh, Hillary Clinton, or uh, as I like, like to say, Hillary Clinton lost against literally anyone who would have opposed her because people just don't like Hillary Clinton. Even when she was young and pretty, she had people have a very immediate and visceral negative reaction to her. So what happened is um, a lot of people who are just kind of like normal liberals or normal Democrats, uh, their brain broke. Uh, and we all kind of thought they would get over it. Uh, I didn't vote for Obama. Um, and uh, when he got elected in uh, 2008, uh, I, I was on a working party in Afghanistan. I found out and I, and I literally left the working party. That's what, they, that's what they call it when you're, we were unloading connexes. And I literally kicked rocks. I literally kicked rocks for five minutes and then I went back to the working party. And then I got over it. They never got out. And one of the big things they started about was the woke eight-year-old. The woke eight-year-old, these people would tweet... And it would, it would be them watching the news, and consistently, it was an eight-year-old. Consistently. I think this is some conscious thing, where eight years before, it, you know, Obama had won, so they, 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 and they would always say, their, their kid would say something ridiculously woke and intelligent at the age of eight. Um, uh, and so, it's a couple years later, and I think this is literally the woke eight-year-old going through puberty. Uh, so, she's got the pussy hats. That's, that's a whole nother. And the cactus has a pussy hat on it too. Um, the pussy hat is, oh boy, this is, it's, it's basically the same thing. Um, uh, as soon as Trump was elected, they started claiming that this kind of handmade tail nightmare America existed and started protesting it. And it was basically a bunch of fat middle-aged white, oh, that's a little on the nose, middle-aged white women flying from Seattle to uh, throw trash on the ground in Washington, D.C. and take selfies. Um, and now that this is like a weird symbol of feminism, it's stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, then we get into her and we get to see, uh, oh, she's, uh, oh, the other one I forgot uh, is um, kids that don't act like any kid does, but kids who act like what they think uh, a kid should act like. So she's, She's woke, but she's super childish. Like, she's 12, but she acts like a six-year-old. So literally, she's playing with tam tampons. And the dad walks in, and the dad's got some nice birthing hips. Yeah, best dad. Your hips are wider than your shoulders there, bro. Do some freaking dumbbell raise or something. This is embarrassing. Okay, so she actually says, I'm 12. So then they do the, uh, the real-world uh, talk. Uh, hey, YouTube, that's a thing. Netflix, what's the deal with that? Minecraft, that's a video game. Um, so her, uh, that, oh God. I, ah. So, so now the, the woke eight year old who is now 12 is talking to the camera. She's like, So that's my dad. He's not what some people picture when they think of a cop. And then, oh God, she goes so bad at writing. This is a 12 year old talking. Uh, and her reference to uh, TV cops are, me and Chelsea Kane are the same age, are the TV cops when me and Chelsea Kane were kids. Oh, actually, Magnum P.I. wasn't a cop. He was a Navy SEAL and then he was a private investigator. 
Oh, you screwed up that! Oh my gosh, you screwed up everything. Magnum P.I. wasn't even a freaking cop. He was Navy SEAL, then he was Navy Intelligence, and then he got out and he was a private investigator. Who thinks of a cop as Magnum P.I.? Yes, freaking uh, Sonny Crockett was a police officer, but again, that, that this is something that 12-year-olds in 1985 would think. Not Okay, so uh, the mom died and the dad's a sad sack uh, cuck. Oh, God, so embarrassing. This is another trope. Again, we're gonna look at it right here. This is the this is the the cop team, the effeminate, narrow-shouldered dad who wears disco queen shirts, and then the woke I'm gonna say lesbian Pakistani woman. Let's just let's just go. So um, what happens is uh, and I am not making this up. Oh gosh, this is literally uh. Can you see all of this? This is literally a double page spread of mom humor. So the plot of this, and I am not making this up, is uh, there's basically like these cats. Well, uh, girls, um, once they go through puberty, they start turning into cats and killing people. And um, it's brought on by a mutation from toxoplasmosis and cat shit. Yeah, it's... Now, you almost think, oh, maybe she's having a little fun and she's tweaking... But it's not framed as that stupid. Or it's not framed as, yeah, everything's getting a little crazy, so let's comment on how crazy it is. It's just uh, it's just regular old um, uh, comfortable middle class feminism pretending to be constantly oppressed. So then we get this double page spread and, okay, it's a flat angle of an apartment building. And then there's this couple... And again, these are not actual characters. They just cut to a double page spread of LOL so random. So the girl is on the balcony with her boyfriend and says, uh, why at award shows do women get kissed on the cheek and men get handshake? And then the guy says, I don't know. And what's with all the prostitutes in space? Like every movie, sci-fi movie, there has to be prostitutes. That's the future you want to show girls? Is it so hard to imagine a universe without a dominant heteronormative patriarchy? And then he says, I'm thinking of growing a porn stash. Ha ha ha, guys are dumb. Uh, but uh, women, <laughs> what is this? This is three random thoughts that Chelsea Kane had over a week. And she just put them into this random character that will never pop up again. Oh, and then we're getting some old lady humor. And again, this is not old ladies as old ladies are now, which don't look that old. This is old ladies as old ladies looked when me and Gail Simone and Chelsea Kane were kids, where when you were 60, you looked old. So she's saying a weem away, a weem away. She's thinking it. And then a kid or a monkey? I can't tell. It's so small. I don't even know what that is. And then this guy, they're all, ha ha ha. Isn't that funny? Remember that song? 20 years ago what if three people on the same floor were uh, thinking it that'd be pretty funny and then uh, we get some just oh gosh uh, so then these two characters say I don't know it seems like too much maintenance and then the character says no nah, you just need the right wax would you consider your head shape to be round or oval and then they say heart shaped that, that that's the joke so then we get to see uh, someone killed by the, the cats. And then we uh, go to the office the dad works at. God, this, this hips to shoulder ratio is pissing me the hell off. Okay, sidebar. I think I've told this story before. But um, when... Uh, God, make sure I'm actually recording. When uh, Diana was really young, like two... Uh, she used to watch like Caillou and stuff. And um, I always hated Caillou because Caillou's a little wimp. He was literally scared of a butterfly in one issue. But I was really bothered by Caillou's father, who was a complete like soy boy cuck, like 10 years before that became a thing. So I literally Googled, I hate Caillou's dad. And I found this mommy blog with like a 50 page thread on uh, mothers who. <laughs> <laughs> they were just roasting Caillou's uh, dad to death. You're like, do you ever notice he has woman hips? <laughs> um, 
So then the yeah, best dad. Oh, look at how the, her, the partner is of, of, you know, looking at him like he's a fucking idiot because he's a man. Um, so then we go to we get some more mom humor. The the police division that takes care of these cat monsters. It's called Scat. Ha ha ha. Okay. So then we get to meet the uh, team, and it is literally the most annoying. You got this SJW. Oh yeah, the hunter. Oh my gosh, like cupcakes, and she's eating like a cheeseburger. Um, food. Like I'm like starving right now. And then you got uh, a, a a wee below. You got the Gordon Good brother, like completely uh, harmless uh, wimp black guy. So then they start explaining uh, the background of this concept. Oh god! Yeah. Then we get into the the plot of it. So they're tracking down. Our girls turning into killer cats. Okay, so they say, um, What if you lived with a monster? What would you do? I love you, Bella, but we knew this day was coming. You're a danger to the community. If you lose control, we're all dead. Oh, so in the interviews, uh, basically, um, Chelsea Kane was doing this like, um, I wanted to do a story about what society is terrified of. And then she's like, what is the biggest fear that society has? I was like, ISIS, the Taliban. She's like, women. They're like terrified. I was like, um, the funny thing is that a couple months ago, I, that was kind of laughable, but actually right now it's a little bit true. <laughs> if you're following the Kavanaugh thing, um, uh, we, you can now be, uh, found, uh, guilty, uh, basically, uh, with no evidence, uh, with, uh, not only no evidence, but no even direct accusation. Something might have happened 40 years ago. It was either you or someone else. I, okay, yeah, you're guilty. So then uh, they're getting away from the daughter. And they say, the whole thing was traced back to cat poop. A mutation in a parasite called toxoplasmosis. It lives in cat poop. So basically we all have it. No? No? Anyone who's ever changed a litter box or played in a sandbox or touched someone who just pet a cat. Okay, so... So then you get it, you get it, women, right? Women, women. So this is, again, oppression porn. It's just like the Handmaid's Tile or all this stuff. It's like, um, I was going through TSA and I smiled and the guy asked for my number. Um, you have it so easy. <laughs> there is no identity group in the history of mankind who has had an easier life than Western women. It is literally a life of luxury compared to most of the world right now and all of the world throughout most of human history. Uh, but then we get this uh, Burger King Kid Club of oppressed uh, women. By the way, why do uh, you ever notice, in, in especially in commercials, uh, black women always have like... Uh, you can tell they're black from like 300 yards away hairdos. Uh, I, I don't know what black women you're meeting, but most black women I, I see have straightened hair. It's just kind of easier to deal with and uh, you can do more things with it and it's it's just easier. They like it. So, um, yeah. So uh, then we talk about, oh, the women, they're monsters because we're all afraid of women. Oh my gosh. Oh, kitty. The little girl thinks it's a kitty cat. Ha ha ha. What is this? Okay, then we get like really detailed. There's a scribble. Okay, I don't know what's going on. It's so stupid. So then she started getting her period, and then she says, Oh no. Oh no. The thing that. Oh no. She's a monster. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I had the zoom all screwed up, so uh, I, I can't get a copyright strike because uh, you can't follow the story when I'm. Got the zoom all crazy, but uh, this was terrible. Um, this was completely terrible. Now, one of the big things is uh, okay, so I don't try to talk about people's family or kids, but um, she keeps bringing them up, and um, this is not a recipe for anything good. This is a recipe for endless grievance, endless 
unhappiness. Uh, the men are either uh, wimps, as we saw with the Weebolo, the adult who still wears a Weebolo uh, outfit, the narrow shouldered dad, and then the the fake, the absolutely fraudulent idea that uh, Western women are um, uh, in some sort of slave like existence where they're in chains. I know this is. Oh, God. The shirts say girls can do anything, fight like a girl, feminist as F. Freaking. This is embarrassing. Um, so basically, this is the thing that you see from SJWs. Uh, they use their kids, they indoctrinate their kids, uh, they propagandize to their kids, and then they wonder why they're completely neurotic and miserable in their teens and adulthoods. Uh, I've got something crazy to uh, tell you. Um, uh, uh, girls do not naturally uh, hate men or feel nervous around them. Um, uh, if you raise a daughter in a normal way, uh, she, she likes the shows with princes. She's going to like her dad. Uh, she's going to have a crush on uh, uh, Barry Allen on the TV show. It's normal. Just, just normal. You're feeding... You're making, they're talking about the, the cat poop makes the girls sick. This extremist propaganda is making the girls sick. You're, it's toxic, it, literally. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for a notification. If you want to work at Marvel, just uh, uh, ask Brian Michael Bendis <laughs> and play the gender card and then they will Rub your shoulders for two years, slowly getting you to uh, maybe be a comic book. And then you can just turn on them like a cur dog. Why not? Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, I still got some comics from last week to get through, so I probably won't be going to the new uh, comic shop for new comic books until Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.